Prime Minister Mohamed Roble delivered a situation report on the progress toward elections in Somalia to international partners in Mogadishu Monday. The government is seeking around $40 million for administration and security around polling. Training of election committees has already begun, but there are other technical assistance from outside that may still be required. A statement from the international partners noted steps taken that they support. We note the NCC took important decisions on the election timetable and the role of the technical election support team and its expansion to include federal member state representatives. The European Union's lead diplomat in Mogadishu, Nicholas Berlanga, recently launched the EU-funded Electoral Situation Room. The ESR will support technical committees and assist in dispute resolution. Somalia is more than doubling the number of electors casting ballots from 2016. There will be 101 votes cast per seat in the legislature this time. International partners had been pressuring Somali stakeholders for months to get an election deal done. Funds from international financial institutions had stopped six months before elections due to regulations at the World Bank and IMF. The pressure and trouble with funding appeared to play a small role in bringing parties together. It's my honor and privilege to take up the role of British ambassador to Somalia. Through the process, London changed its ambassador to Somalia, with Kate Foster now the UK's top diplomat here. Somali people are long and deep. Others have stayed consistent, despite rumors that US Ambassador Donald Yamamoto might be replaced soon. Berlanga has been a strong cheerleader during the process, encouraging compromise and rewarding with praise. The United Nations top man in Somalia, James Swan, recently praised the election agreement during a UN Security Council meeting. However, the U.S. and U.N. were both loud proponents of universal suffrage for these polls and have privately expressed some disappointment. International bodies have also shown great concern for Somalia reaching the agreed 30 percent threshold for women's representation in the National Assembly. The commissioner of the National Independent Election Commission, Halim Ishmael, has been tweeting frequently on women's participation as well. The issue came up during the meeting with Roble. We welcome the decision to have registration fees for women candidates and further steps to secure the agreed 30% quota for women's representation. The international partner statement concluded with a positive comment on the country's future. We are convinced that a swift, peaceful and credible electoral process will help return Somalia to the path of stability and prosperity. ADN TV will continue to report on steps forward on Somalia's march to election.